thank evening you, for Aaron. you. Good to see you. All right. Thank you both. Uh, night two, worst infomercial ever. Also, we call it the 2020 DNC Adam Schiff show. Let's put it that way. The past two nights, just heard nothing but several Democrats touting Biden and his campaign's far left agenda. More left than any major political party in history. 2016, Republican presidential candidate uh, John Kasich's madness. Here with reaction to all of this, senior White House advisor Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, I'm sure you have one or two things to say about all of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Sean, thanks for having me. Four years ago, I was with you in Philadelphia, the Democratic Convention, and we would say, wow, have you ever seen such a grievance-filled uh, candidate nominee that's feckless and reckless and cantankerous? And the answer is yes, even more so now. You've got Joe Biden, who beat all these socialist radical ideas in the primary and the candidates who carried them, now capitulating and congratulating to the same people. And it looks a little bit like a swamp reunion to me. For a convention that's supposed to be about the people and for the people, you've got lots of folks who have been in and of Washington for decades. Bill Clinton, they gave him less than five minutes tonight. If you look at the average time that he's spoken over the last, say, seven, eight Democratic conventions, 60-some minutes, 25 minutes, 48 minutes, his role has shrunk in the party because the party that he tried to be a moderate in no longer exists. It has been taken over by the squad that doesn't do squat. It's been taken over by the Bernie Biden manifesto. And I think most importantly, the person mentioned most at the Biden convention is not Joe Biden. It's Donald Trump. Trump, 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 Trump. It's every it's every noun, verb and adverb out of their mouths. It tells you that the Democratic Party itself has no confidence in the competence of their nominee, Joe Biden. They missed their moment. Joe Biden as the nominee means that Donald Trump continues to run as the outsider, the underdog, the underestimated outsider, even though he's the incumbent president. Usually the challenger to the incumbent owns the mantle of outsider. That cannot possibly be true if you've got Joe Biden, who has done less in 47 years in Washington than Donald Trump has done 47 months in Washington. You and I live and breathe and eat politics and have for decades, right? Okay. There's never been a, a major political party this radical. How will the country accept it, whether True. they try to hide it or not hide it? I mean, he's, he's embraced it, he's owned it, and, and clearly, I guess, believes in it, or else he wouldn't have done it. We already know what the public thinks. If you look at polling on issues, which is always much more telling than horse race ballot questions, because those change over time as people solidify their votes and take a look at the candidates and make their decisions. But if you look at policy questions, Americans reject everything the Green New Deal stands for. It's expensive. It's intrusive. It's invasive. It's, it's just the worst of the federal government banning cows and gas and air travel and the like. In fact, when it went to a vote in the United States Senate, Sean, do you recall how many votes the Green New Deal got? Zero. Zero, including among the Democrats who were running for president at the time who said that they wanted to support it. It got zero votes when they actually had to go back and tell their constituents, we support this. We know abortion in the ninth month is a non-starter. We know raising our taxes, you know, the business tax went from 35 percent down to 21 percent under President Trump. And if you raise it back up again, millions of Americans will lose their jobs. We know that people don't want the big lie of the last 10 years. You can keep your plan, keep your doctor to continue under Joe Biden. It's President Trump, the health care president, who's been trying to stabilize these exchanges and make health care more affordable, more accessible. So if you look at issues polling, the Democratic Party right now is way out of step with where Americans are. That's why it's very odd that Joe Biden, who beat down all those issues, beat down all those policies and the people who stood for them, is, is rolling back to the cent rolling back to the hard left and doing that. Look, if you look at all the footage of Joe Biden bragging about with Bill Clinton, his vote on NAFTA, Donald Trump's done away with that with the USMCA, much better for this country, for job creators, job seekers, job holders, much better for Mexico, much better for Canada, much better for the United States of America. Look at Joe Biden and Bill Clinton bragging about their big crime bill in 1994. It's President Trump who's enacted criminal justice yeah. reform such that people who are overcharged and over sentenced have a second chance at life. And we will be highlighting a number of those people next week at our People's Convention. You will see people who have been consequentially, measurably impacted in their lives because President Trump is in the Oval Office and is commander in chief. And that's really the story of his presidency. All right. Kellyanne, always good to see you. Thank you for being with us here now. With more reaction. Former White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, Fox News contributor Dan Bongino, Congressman Dan Crenshaw. Uh, let me start with you, Sarah. Your take on the whole events. 
uh, look, last night was incredibly clear. Not even the Obamas can bring enthusiasm to Joe Biden's campaign. The ratings were as low as I think they've ever been. I think the Democrats are going to learn the hard way that Americans just don't want lawlessness and socialism. They're looking for something that brings safety, security, prosperity to the country. And Donald Trump has proven he can do that. The Democrats, I think Kellyanne made a great point. All they're talking about is Donald Trump because they have no enthusiasm and no excitement for their own candidate because they have a terrible story and track record. They have nothing mm -hmm. else but to attack this president who, frankly, has a great story and great track record to tout. And I think you're going to see a lot of that next week. Dan Bongino. Well, let's be crystal clear about what happened tonight. This is the single weakest and worst presidential nominee for a major political party in modern American history in Joe Biden, who's about to sink this nomination tonight. We have a man who cognitively can't handle the job description, number one. That's clear as day. It's not an insult. It's not personal. I have no personal animus towards him. Secondly, what he can do is he can be a blank slate. And on that blank slate, who's writing on it? AOC, Bernie Sanders, and the radical left. When you buy a piece of artwork and you bring it home, you want a finished piece. You don't bring home a blank slate and say, paint it in my house. The problem is you're bringing home with Joe Biden if you vote from a blank slate and everybody painting on him is painting on him stuff you ain't going to like. Defunding the police, taking away more of your money through taxes and crushing the economy. This is really destructive for the country. By the way, the roll call that you're watching on